Uh, I've always been very interested in nature and photography. Uh, my parents were great outdoorsmen, and from the time I was a little child, um, I had a brownie camera. Uh, we were always out hunting and fishing on the island, and um, it became very complementary with um, the lifestyle of being around horses. And so I've, I've been around horses my entire life, and um, very fond of the outdoors. Um, when I started to wind my equestrian career down uh, three or four years ago, uh, that's when I decided to take up photography a little bit more seriously. Um, I am primarily self-taught, um, although I've had some wonderful mentors um, over the last few years. Uh, Joe Coffey and Tim Shum have been a wonderful help to me, um, teaching me a lot about composition and, and uh, managing color. Um, and uh, it's, it's a passion I've always been interested in, and, and now it's just starting to come to fruition. Um, well, these are the wild horses from Sable Island, and um, they are the only unmanaged wild horse herd in the Americas, which is why I was drawn to photograph them. Um, it was my interest to see horses in their completely natural state. Um, I've been a horse trainer for um, most of my life, over 30 years, and um, I have a great preference for horses. And um, to have the privilege to go to Sable Island as a photographer was an amazing experience. Um, the uh, horses are um, completely unmanaged. They've been um, that way for over 60 years. The horses originally um, came to the island in the mid-1700s, and at one time they were used uh, for rescue operations to save shipwrecked sailors. Um, the island is noted for its uh, shipwrecks. There's over um, 250 documented shipwrecks on the island, and uh, so the horses were used for um, various purposes, um, farming um, to help the uh, the settlers um, farm the land, and they would ride the horses up and down the beach and uh, look for shipwrecks and, and for people to save. And then when they discovered the shipwrecks, they would actually hook the horses up to wagons that carried lifeboats. So the history of the island is really quite remarkable. So Sable Island is quite a remote location. It's about um, 180 kilometers off the coast of Nova Scotia. And the only um, buildings that are on the island belong to Environment Canada. And there's one permanent manager there. And there's a woman that's lived on the island for over 20 years. And she's been the person that's been responsible for keeping track of the records of um, the existence of the, the horses on the island. Um, 
the horses are um, they have no predators and so their only real enemy is the weather so even though the herd is completely unmanaged um, there are some horses that are lost over the course of the winter and it's nature's law and, and without human interference this herd has remained extremely healthy um, there's over 400 horses on the island currently and uh, the herd in general is a, a very healthy herd um, in the two times that I've been to the island uh, I've never seen a lame horse. Um, the only time I've ever seen a horse that wasn't healthy was um, one of the older stallions that had lost his herd and was getting near the end of his prime. And um, he's in this image here. And um, he was a, really a magnificent horse. And um, when I came upon him, um, he was alone. He was wandering along the beach and um, it was very thin and it was the end of a very long winter. And I wasn't sure um, how much time he had left, but I felt that I would validate his life somewhat if I could take his photo and, and make a composition of him and it would show the true essence of, of Sable Island. And uh, that's the image, it's called Journey's End.